As I prepare for the upcoming Vipassana meditation, I find myself naturally meditating more. And so I have to ask myself the question of what is meditation uh, and why? Why is it that you're meditating? Why is it that you're taking on the role of a meditator now all of a sudden? Uh, what's gotten into your head, Saeed? I mean, really? Like, is that what you want to do all your life? Really? Like, just sit down, cross-legged, and just close your eyes, and that's it? I mean, come on, Saeed. Get out of the house and smell the roses. Enjoy the day instead of waking up and putting on your blindfold and just sitting there cross-legged for two hours. Come on. Don't you have something better to do? So, of course, these are some of the thoughts that you inevitably find yourself asking. And so I have, I guess, some answers that I sort of, you know, came up with. And uh, first of all, I think my athletic background, playing sports pretty much all my life and excelling at them, has really helped me in many ways because I sort of look at everything now as sets and reps and adaptation. So I look at meditation and I simply see meditation as a sport. And I would simply have to practice every day and increase both the quantity and the quality of my practice and that eventually I would become more adapted to the practice, I would become more adapted to the sport and whether I like it or not, whether I try to or I don't try to, I will get better at it because that's just the way it is. That's sort of, you know, you, you know, learning is the way of things. If you just do something over and over, even if you're an idiot, you'll learn. You'll still learn. You'll just pick it up subconsciously. And I look at meditation as a sport. And I look at uh, really uh, adept meditators, the expert meditators, uh, simply as people who have practiced the sport long enough to become good at it. And so that helps me. My athletic background really helps me look at these things. And I'm preparing for the Vipassana retreat as such. As such. So I am increasing the quantity of my meditation daily. So for example, today I did two hours in the morning and I'm going to do two hours in the evening. And I talked in the previous video how three days out from the meditation, I'll be doing six hours a day. So three and three. Uh, because the actual meditation is 10 hours a day for 10 days. So I simply look at it as a sport and I'm beginning to adapt to it. You know, I uh, m even my body, my, you know, my legs hurt less now and I'm just able to sit longer and so the quality is also improving the concentration is also improving I could see it because it's simple you know if you want to get good at something you just do it and you keep doing it and whether you try or not whether you like it or not you'll get better at it you'll, your concentration will improve anything really will improve and I just see it simply as a sport uh, and so therefore, it's not that big of a deal uh, from my perspective to, you know, be good at meditation. I just know that you just, you know, I played sports. I, uh, you know, I was a superstar in gymnastics and I really put in a lot of work and practice every day and I just got really good at it. So people would see me, see me do all these uh, sets, you know, I would sort of do the, the human flag and I'd follow it up with one arm and I really put in this beautiful, uh, I guess, artistic uh, uh, moves together, right? And I, I would think nothing of it in all honesty, like I would just be like, yeah, like, yeah, I do this because I, I put in the work, I practice every day, like, this is easy, you know, it's easy. So everything is easy if, if you come at it from that perspective. And so in the same way, I think 
Vipassana sounds pretty terrifying, 10 hours a day, 10 days in a row. And uh, I don't think so, because I think, I think if you practice and you adapt, then you just, you adapt to it, you get used to it. It's like asking a construction worker, you know, how do you do this all day, 12 hours a day of grueling work? They're doing it, aren't they? They're just adapted to it. And they got good at it too. And that's construction. That's just, that's, you know, one of the most grueling things you could do as a, for a living. Five, six days a week, right? So it's the same thing with meditation. Now, why meditation? What's, what's going on here? What's, you know, why is, why is it that I'm doing this? Why is it that I, I want to meditate every day for prolonged periods? Well, so I am currently in the sport of mental gymnastics. Okay, so I am in the process of taking control of my mind. I am in the process of, as Vivekananda uh, said, rising above the laws of nature. Vivekananda said that the, the job of a human being is to rise above the laws of nature. And what does that mean? It means that you come into this world and you take on a physical, biological car, vehicle, and it is programmed in a certain way. There is the DNA, which is physical DNA, which is informational field that gives you the uh, certain biological features, physical appearance, and then, of course, it would also affect your personality and your tendencies. Uh, and then you have your, your psychic DNA, which is your samskaras, which are your impressions from your previous uh, rounds around the cycle of death and rebirth. And all of that, that's all the programs of nature. So you come into this package and you're experiencing yourself in, 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 as a program, basically. So you start to identify with the program. You say, I am tall. I am, uh, I am blonde. I am black, I am white. Uh, I mean, that's just a program, the DNA program, right? But you, be, you start to identify with it. And then you start to identify with the personality traits, like I'm an introvert, I'm an extrovert, uh, I like tea, I like coffee, I like this, I like that. You know, which could all be affected by the program itself, right? I mean, you, you could simply like your tea because all your ancestors drank tea and it left an, an impression, you know, on the DNA and now you like this, you start to identify with the program. You think you're the program, you think you're the program package, you're it, you're it, yeah, that's what you think, right? And then there's, uh, so then there's also other types of program that go beyond just the, the, the body, which is the, the mental programming of, uh, uh, of the so society, right? So uh, you say, I am American, I am Canadian, I am uh, Thai, I am Russian, I am African. And so that's sort of the program because all of these things, all these political identities, continental identities, etc., they're very, I mean, very, they're very, uh, very fragile, by the way, because they keep changing, you know, they keep changing. Like, for example, there was no such thing just, you know, 100 years ago, there was no such, such thing as Syrian. Syria was just part of the Ottoman Empire. So there was Ottoman, I'm um, Ottoman, right? And before that, Arabic, and before that, Roman, because Syria was a Roman colony. So you identify as, so even that's like very, very, like, very superficial and very like, it's not, it has, it's not concrete whatsoever. But that's your social programming, so you begin to also identify with it. So Vivekananda says, the job of a human being, if the human is going to be liberated, is to rise above the laws of nature. That is the programming of nature. Because all of this is nature all this stuff right so i'm currently in that business in the business of taking control of my mind of rising above the laws of nature uh, and becoming the creator as opposed to the created okay so right now you're the created you're if you're identified with the program you're just running off the programs that's it you're the, you're at, you're at the mercy of the creation you see uh, but if you rise above and you become the creator, well, now you're the creator. So you're no longer at the mercy of the creation, you're the creator. And if you would like to create something because, you know, you experienced the previous creations and you just didn't find them all that interesting, because remember, everything is an experience. 
uh, you say, well, I'm just going to change the creation. I'm going to just create something different. So uh, now if we're getting into mental gymnastics, right? So, you know, for gymnastics, for example, one move uh, would be handstands, right? That's one move. The other, another move would be human flag. Another move would be the back, back lever. Another move would be front lever, right? And, and on and on the, the moves go. So, uh, in the same way, if you're getting into mental gymnastics, there are many moves. You know, the mind is, is faster than the physical because the physical is the manifestation of the mind. So, you have a lot of moves here. So, uh, through meditation, through developing a solid, uh, prolonged meditation, meditation practice, you can begin to develop different moves uh, in the mind. So, if let's say, uh, you, you know, let's give you an example here. I mean, just sort of, you know, what I'm thinking. I'm thinking of developing and, and basically becoming, just developing, having a habit of meditating five hours a day. Five to six hours. So, let's say two to three hours in the morning, two to three hours in the evening, as just as a lifestyle. Okay? So, why that much in like why that's a lot of time why that's because I want to develop all the different moves I know if I spend more time and I know if I if I, if the quality of that time you know is enhanced and I'm adapted to the practice of meditation which means I'm you know I'm, I'm better at it I can develop different skills so for example say one day say let's say today uh, I want to develop the skill of concentration just concentrating on something so I would sit in the morning for two and a half to three hours, two hours to three hours, let's say, and I would just simply take out an object, any object, it could be my hands, and I would just look at my hands for two hours, or three hours, let's say. And then I'd come back in the evening again, and I'd look at my hand for three hours. Okay, so this is the equivalent of me training in the gym and uh, you know doing wall handstands, okay? Now, I'll be a little sore tomorrow, and maybe the next day even. So maybe tomorrow I won't do that. Maybe I'll develop something different. You know, like if I did handstand, wall handstands because I'm practicing to do freestyle handstands, uh, then I would, uh, I would be sore for the next day or two. So maybe tomorrow I'll do something else. You know, maybe tomorrow I'll do a front lever because the front lever uses, you know, sort of different muscles. And so, you know, I could play around with that. Plus, I might get bored. I'm like, I don't want to stare at my hands two days in a row. So, you know, you give yourself a little chance to adapt to the practice, to learn whatever you learn because you're learning and you don't know what you're learning. A lot of it, most of it is subconscious. Then maybe the next day I'll come in and say, well, today I feel like developing uh, the practice of uh, focusing my attention on a particular part of the body. So the next day, you put on the blindfold and you say, well, okay, today I'm just focusing on my third eye. And you just do your best for three hours in the morning, three hours in the evening, to just practice on your third eye. You just focus on your third eye. Of course, it's going to be hard, you know, you're going to have a lot of thoughts, it's going to be this, but you just always come back to your third eye because you really want to develop the practice of focusing on one thing inside your body, inside of you, okay? So you do that also, and then the same thing. Uh, maybe the day after you want to do something different so you come back because there's a lot of skills you come back you say well how about astral travel that sounds pretty groovy uh, so then you know you get in your meditation and you uh, try to calm your body down enough maybe this time you don't sit you lay because laying in my experience is easier for astral travel uh, so maybe you lay and then you know you try to you know calm your body do use a certain technique that you learned and that that might get you out of your body and now you're traveling in the astral plane and you come back the next day and say, well, I, I'm going to do the concentration again today. And you do that. Then there's, I mean, there's an endless amount of skills. Then you get really good at these, all these skills and you say, well, I want to take it to the next level. Uh, I want to start practicing. Uh, and then, you know, maybe one session could be visualization. I mean, if you're visualizing six hours a day, something particularly in your life that you want to improve, you probably manifest it pretty quick. So you could play around with it every day, just like you would play around with, say, if training for gymnastics, you do different moves every day. You wait to, to heal, you know, to the, the soreness to go away and the muscle to get stronger so you could come and do the practice better, right? And then, you know, you like, I'm going to take it up to the next level, man. I'm going to start reading the Akashic Records here. 
right? And you start to sort of learn some techniques and you begin to imp implement them in the meditation. You say, well, I want to do psychokinesis now. I want to move things with my mind because maybe you've been for a year practicing concentration and now your concentration is really, really good. And so now you feel ready for the next move. Right? Like first with gymnastics, with calisthenics, you know, you start with just pull-ups and push-ups. And you feel really good. I mean, that's how it was for me. I just felt like oh, I could do push-ups and pull-ups endlessly. Let's move to the next move. So maybe you could now concentrate on an object endlessly and you say, well, let's try and do psychokinesis, telekinesis, moving things with my mind. And on and on and on it goes. On and on and on it goes from here. You understand? So... That's how I'm looking at it. I'm literally looking at it as a sport, as mental gymnastics. And it's a vast, vast field. There are many, many skills. Natural, you know, these are all natural abilities of the soul. These are the skills of the soul. Okay? So you're just remembering. It's all the meditation is a process of remembering uh, your your natural innate abilities as a, as a soul. Right? Uh, and... And yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much how I see this. Now, of course, maybe one day you want to meditate, like just watch your thoughts. You know, you see how what I mean. You could also do like three hours in the morning, I'm just going to stare at something. And then you say three hours in the evening, I'm going to just observe my thoughts. You could play around with it so many different ways. Right? So many, so many different ways. And uh, that seems to be the sport that I'm getting into at the moment. You know, that, that I've always been a, sort of a, a sporty fella. Right, always playing some kind of a sport. I like playing. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm playful, and uh, this is the game that I that I'm playing right now. That I I want to play. This, I mean, I don't know what else to play at this point. I played many games, uh, and it seems that now at this part of this character's uh, movie script storyline, the game that is pulling this character into it. Uh, with a burning fire, with a burning desire, uh, is the game of mental gymnastics, a.k.a. meditation. Now, another definition for meditation is that it is also rising above the illusion to come back and play in the illusion. It's the same thing as saying, instead of becoming the created, instead of being the created, you're the creator. Because all of this is an illusion. You see? Uh, and with meditation you're rising above the illusion you're watching it first of all so you're no longer identified with uh, the illusion with the creation and from that perspective you could play within the illusion because you're not identified with it so you could change it with your mind but if you're identified with it you're bought into the illusion you think it's this is real you think i'm totally bound by the laws of physics and the laws of of nature right i mean that's why not like you know you, you tibetan yogis you know there's many stories of Tibetan yogis who, you know, routinely levitated because they're not bought into the illusion. They transcended the laws of nature. You see? But if you think you're nature, you think you're the body, yeah, you're not going to be able to levitate because you really believe in this in this uh, thing that there is gravity pulling on me. You really believe in it. You're identified with it. The belief system is so strong. You can't, you can't fly. But if you totally transcend it, is when the magic begins to happen. And that's how Wim Hof is able to... Uh, keep himself warm in in minus uh, in icy conditions basically for, for forever because he transcended the laws that say that human body in uh, icy conditions is going to go into hypothermia and it's going to freeze uh, he transcended it he no longer believes it and then he's able to concentrate on becoming heat he learned the tumor, tumor meditation technique which you become heat essentially and if you're heat I mean what's ice going to do to you you're heat you're fire not going to do anything. So that's how the, some of these uh, people, which are many, many of them are alive right now. Wim Hof is just an example that most of you guys are familiar with. Uh, David Blaine, you know, that's how a lot of beings alive right now. We don't have to go in the, and say Jesus walked on water. They, these beings are in front of your eyes right now. That's how they're able to do what they do. That's how they're able to seem to be supernatural, to seem to be superhuman, when in truth, they've just learned how to rise above the laws of nature i guess thus making them superhuman but only from the perspective of a human only from the perspective of somebody who's completely bought into the illusion completely completely bought into the game completely bought into maya as the only reality when in the truth brahman is the only reality all else is an illusion so then this is an illusion and so this is play it's all play this is 
play the play of of the divine and you forget yourself but once you remember yourself you become the creator again so if there is something in your creation you you know you experience something and you say ah, okay i experienced this i just don't want to experience it anymore you could change it right and and you know i mean if you begin to really develop all your mental gymnastic skills i mean you know you you would be you would be a very powerful being you really would be very a very powerful you would develop a lot of cities a lot of powers uh, and you know you would also experience more oneness and more love and more joy because in order for you to manifest some of these things you would have to go into that space of love and oneness and unity and aloneness all oneness right so so that's meditation that's why I've, I'm sort of playing this game right now because there really is no other game to play at the moment for me I mean you know I what else am I gonna play you know for me even at the moment the game of nature right admiring beauty in nature looking for the most beautiful places I've done this game for a while and uh, I still do it still come to these beautiful places but uh, again the game that I'm pulled into it's the game of meditation of going within of becoming the creator and not being caught into the illusion not being caught in the game uh, so that I could come back and play within the illusion play within the game and become the creator as opposed to, to be just a, the creation okay because uh, you know one is a position of power and the other is powerlessness essentially right so that's meditation in a nutshell that's meditation in a nutshell think about it like a sport if you've ever played sports, think about it like sports. Then it becomes easy. Everything becomes easy if you think about it like a sport, like something like reps and sets and adaptation, really. Those the three things. Think about it. Okay, I, I'm going to do this amount of reps, this amount of sets, and I'm just going to adapt. That's all. That's all. You know, and that, I mean, you look at everything else and it's like, it's pretty easy because everything is easy because the, this is how everything works stress adaptation so the stress is the reps and the set set the sets and then the adaptation happens naturally on its own that's how evolution works so uh thank you to all the patreons for uh supporting this channel uh i really really love you guys and i send you true sincere appreciation and uh if you would like to join the patreon family there is the link in the description if you want to just make one-time donations to support this channel uh, you could do so via PayPal, okay, down below in the description. And uh, that's about it. Until next time, may the force be with you.